I want to I want to take the criticism away from the system real quick, and I want to okay. turn it towards the 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 potential uh, that you see in yourself filling this role. Let's say we're having this conversation four years from now, and you've got nothing but A plus remarks. What have you done between here and now to deserve an A plus remark? To to, to deserve an A plus mark for the work you've done, uh, being uh, the citywide. Um, uh, at-large chair of the Minneapolis Public School Board. Well, let's come back to like my four priorities. One is helping students and families and employees in the district deal with this COVID pandemic and in the aftermath of George Floyd's murder. Mm -hmm. uh, that's it's all been extremely traumatic. Yeah. For everyone involved. Absolutely. The other part is dealing with, you know, really beginning to reduce uh, the opportunity gap and really focusing on equity. The third one is really good budget oversight. Uh, and then the fourth is, how do we get our students back? How do we get our families wanting to send their students back to Minneapolis yeah. public schools? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, there's a lot of things to do, but uh, part of, of the work I've used in closing the opportunity gap and engaging, uh, setting up a very engaging community for BIPOC students to succeed is really getting community involvement. Mm -hmm. Engaging with the community. Go to where they are. Don't always ask them to come to the data yeah. center. Don't even always ask them to go to their school. Mm. It, it's like, where do we go in the community where the, where the students and the families are? Yeah. Because that shows we care. It also begins to address the fact that so many of the major stakeholders and communities feel they've been left out of the Minneapolis public school planning process yeah. Yeah. And, and any sort of relationship. And it takes a long time to rebuild that. But going out into communities. I've said very publicly, I, I commit to going to a different school every week in the district, across the district, to really not just go in and visit and talk to a principal or see parents only at a PTA meeting, but actually go in there and give everyone in that building, teachers, paraprofessionals, the administration in that building, students, families later on, to come talk to me. What is working great in that school? Because every school is having successes. So how do we build upon those successes and support them so they grow? How do we learn from the people who are in that school every day what are obstacles to educating children? Yeah. And how do we begin to reduce those obstacles? And by doing, going out in the community, you, you identify them, you amplify the community's voice, you begin to show them that you're actually listening to what do they like about the school and what are you, what am I doing to help support that and grow it? Uh -huh. What is an obstacle in that school for children's education? What am I doing to highlight those obstacles and find ways to reduce and eliminate those obstacles? Because that will all help educate students. Mm -hmm. And in particular, because we have so many BIPOC students in Minnesota, in Minneapolis, it gives communities of color a chance at different levels to really voice their concerns and it's not going to to like major stakeholders and only yeah. the major stakeholders the only the major nonprofit in the neighborhood no it's it's setting up community meetings yeah and is the person that's occupying the seat right now that you're going for are they visit were they visiting schools i know they visited some schools but i don't know of any soup any board member right now is going to a, a different school every day of the week or even every month yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and, and that's really important to me. It's also really important, uh, you know, some board members go to go, go out in their community. Yeah. Um, Carrie Joe's a really good example of that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but this is a citywide, district-wide seat. Mm -hmm. And so I would commit to doing that across okay. the city and really helping communities, neighborhoods, um, try, to, try to address the issues that are impacting their mm -hmm. children's education. Um, Another way that I would think is like we really get a handle on the budget and we know what the numbers are, we understand what they are, we know and are given reasons why the budget changes, mm -hmm. where when a board member asks what does this line mean in the budget, they're given an answer. Um, I also want to see the board get these crucial financial documents earlier and sooner. Yeah. Um, a few days before the main board meeting yeah. is not enough. And also with the, with the disparity between what they're working with, the $10 million gap and the, the transportation budget that you spoke of at the last forum, I mean, how do you address that like in a few days? I mean, I... I, I mean, you can't address it. It, it takes long term. Yeah. And yeah. it's really beginning to change 
the culture mm -hmm. of the Minneapolis School District and the board to, yeah. to become in some ways more professional like other boards yeah, and other yeah, institutions, yeah. which is we don't give our board members the budget at the last minute. Um, we don't just roll something out without knowing how it impacts our students uh -huh. and people in the city. Yeah. And we need time to figure that out. 